Hello everybody, this is another of my Quantlib notebooks. This time I'm going to talk about our dimensionality of um, a Monte Carlo problem and uh, why it matters when generating random numbers. So, first I'll just get the setup out of the way, I'll just import Quantlib, I'll define a helper function because I'm going to make a number of plots all with the same parameters. Okay, as you know, it's uh, the number of uh, random rows that you need for a single sample in your Monte Carlo model. For instance, if you want to generate paths for a single underline over 10 steps, uh, your dimensionality is 10. If you want to generate paths again with 10 steps uh, for 5 correct underlines, your dimensionality is 50. So let's take, uh, in this case, a, a very simple problem. We just want to cover a unit square, so the dimensionality is 2. How does this matter when generating random numbers? Well, if you are using pseudo-random numbers, it doesn't. When you need a pair, I mean one point in the unit square, you can just extract one random number, and that's your x, and then another, and then that's your y. You keep drawing numbers and generating pairs in this uh, in this way. So that's what we're going to do in this first part of the notebook. So I'm going to initialize a random number generator for a couple of thousand times. I'm going to extract the x and then the y for our points, and then I'm just going to plot the resulting set of points. So, it covers, uh, well, randomly enough, the, the unit square. And, uh, as you as you saw, the dimensionality of the problem wasn't uh, mm, used in the generation of the random number. This doesn't hold for quasi-random numbers, or uh, also known as uh, low discrepancy numbers. Because well, the the, the algorithm, the algorithms for generating them are all different, and they they try to cover the the, the required space, and to do that, uh, they place the the points at very precise position. They give them precise values, which means that uh, each of the points in uh, in uh, quasi-random generator is correlated with the one that follows. This, of course, uh, ruins the random properties if they're used in, uh, in the wrong dimensionality. For instance, if we use a Sobol generator with dimensionality 1 and we do the same thing that we did for, the, for our still random generator, our mass and twister, so we extract one point and that's the x, we extract the second and that's the y, we put them together to generate a pair. We're going to have pairs in which the x coordinate is correlated with the y, so this means we are not going to cover mm, fairly the unit square, instead what we're going, we're going to get is something like this, which is obviously not what we want. In this case, we have to specify the dimensionality beforehand, which means we are going to instantiate the random number generator with dimension 2 and we are going to extract the x and y values together. Each row is already one pair of numbers. If we would do it this way, what we get is uniform coverage of the unit square. It doesn't look random at all, of course. As I said, the run low discrepancy numbers are not... Mm, don't, don't try to look random, like pseudo-random pseudo -random numbers. Their, mm, their, their, their purpose is to cover fairly the unit square, which is what this, this does. So, first thing to think about Mm, the correct dimensionality. 
There is also a second problem, which is not as as uh, as bad as using the wrong dimension right with low discrepancy numbers, but still you may want to think about it. And that is that if we have very high dimensionality, low discrepancy numbers are mm, well the 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 the, the, the first numbers in the set that uh, in the draw in the real discrepancy draw are distributed well more fairly than uh, the, the the last ones what i mean is mm, okay let's take as an example a problem with a low number of dimension in which we don't have this problem so let's take a dimension three Again, we're going to extract a number of samples, and what we get is something like this. Okay, there is no obvious obvious bias in these numbers, but uh, well, it might be easier to look at them if we look at projections. So, for instance, we can look in in the x direction. And see the projection of this set of points over the x and sorry the y z plane. So I'm going to define a couple of functions that just extract the, 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 the relevant data and plot them. So if I take the projections over the different planes, I get something like this. So this is the xy plane, the xz, and the yz plane. For low dimensions, there's no problem. I mean, all of these planes are, all of these projections are, are fairly covered. But uh, if we have high dimensionality, not all of the subspaces are covered uh, fairly, which well mm, might be expected since well, we have the problem of covering mm, use, of finding an algorithm that covers the whole space so it's difficult to find one that also takes care correctly of all subspaces um, okay, here is an example I'll take this random number generator with dimensionality 5000 which admittedly is a lot while well, something like, for instance, could be 10 underlines for which we generate paths on, uh, with, with a length of 10 years with one point each, each week. So I'm going to take a number of samples for, from, from this generator and uh, I'm going to look at a uh, few projections in this case, I'm going to look at the projection over the first two dimensions, two dimensions in the middle, and the last two dimensions. What I'm going to get is a fair coverage for the first two dimensions and some kind of structure for the other two. Well, if we look at uh, other couple of dimensions we get other other effects so for instance we can have something like this so in this case in coverage for for those this for the for, for this planes is not fair which in a way could be expected because well we are we have in, the, in this problem dimensionality 5000 I'm extracting just 500 points uh, and uh, and uh, of course this is uh, is going to make it difficult for low discrepancy generator to, to to cover all the subspaces fairly but well just to to to, to have a comparison a pseudo random number would uh, fare differently okay in this case i'm going to use a merchant twister i'm going to extract uh, 500 samples of 5000 numbers if I plot over the same pairs of dimensions that 
I have here, I'm going to have something like this. This is, of course, bad statistics, but still is more or less randomly covering the, the whole unit square. So, how do we fix this in for, for the discrepancy generators? One way, of course, is to increase the number of samples. This gives you a, a better coverage. Another way, which uh, is used uh, often and uh, could be used anyway, because uh, even if uh, the bias is not obvious, there might be some you know, some problems anyway in the in the last dimensions. Another possibility is to use Brownian bridge, but this is uh, something that for for another uh, for another day. So thanks for now, and uh, well. I'll see you later.